roof, hip, swooped roof. Call it a swoop, the actual term for it. There's a side profile of it. I kind of scaled this out three foot over, two foot up, which is a eight pitch. So I'm gonna start basically with an eight pitch hip roof, and then I'm going to figure a good radius that I can use. You can visualize this here. It's being like a circle of an undetermined radius. So we will figure out that radius and put her together. Here's the process. Basically, this is what we got from the side profile coming over 36 and coming up 24. So I'm gonna lay this out as a rafter, just like on that red line. That's an eight, 12 pitch. Then we'll figure out how much depth we want. And we'll use the depth of the radius to determine the radius. Whenever I think about this stuff, I like to draw a picture. And a lot of times I just like to use the square edge of a plywood. So using the corner of the sheet on the floor, 36 over, 24 up, that's my A12 pitch. Now I'm just going to eyeball. By eyeball, I mean, I'm just going to pick a number, how much depth to the swoop I want it to have. So I'm imagining a swoop that comes in six inches. It could be less, you know, it could be just a subtle four inches. I think six inches is a good number, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're going to take the two known variables that we have, which are the length and the height. So this is basically a segmented arc. So we're gonna use a formula to determine the radius. I have an 812 pitch. We need to know the length of the diagonal. So 36, 36 inch run, eight inch pitch. Diagonal is 43 and a quarter. So we're gonna plug that 43 and a quarter and the six inch number into our equation. Okay, so now we just did some math and we found out that our radius is 41.97. That means it's actually, for practical purposes, 42. So now we need to locate the center of this right here. And we're gonna do that by taking this point and swinging our arch at 42. Taking this point and swinging an arch at 42 to find out where they intersect they intersect will be the center of my radius. Okay, so got a nail in the corner. Hook on. I'm gonna go to 42. And I'm gonna swing a radius. So that's the center of our radius. So we'll set the nail right there. We'll swing 42 inch radius. So 
there's our rafter profile. There's our radius. We took this point, swung an arch. Took this point, swung an arch. Basically what that's doing is it's taking the fact that I know my radius is gonna hit here, and I know my radius is gonna hit here. So wherever those two cross, that creates a perfect center bisecting this angle. Um, I knew my depth because I just chose a number. It wasn't anything on the print, but I used the height and the width to figure out the radius of the segmented arc, which happened to be 42. So that's the profile that I'm gonna work with for my swoop porch. All right, so now I've cut the original rafter that I had used to mark out the floor. There's our original rafter right there. I swung the radius. Now all I've done is just build a little jig to make this process easier. Not that it's terribly hard to, be, to do anyways, but I can guarantee that uh, everything's always gonna line up the way that I want. Let me get a good clean layout and a good cut on my rafter. So now I'll just go through the stack, mark these out real quick. All right, so now I've got everything marked out. Got my stack all scribed. Now it's time to figure out what the hip looks like. Because this is swooped on both the side and the side and the side, right? So it's a hip roof. Um, in order to get an arch hip, we have to do a little geometry. So what I've done is marked out the same exact radius as before using the same methods that I used from right here. You could, I'm just slightly redundant to do it twice, but I just drew it out so I could leave my jig alone. So I start by redrawing this radius, all based off of the run of three foot and the rise of two foot that I scaled off the drawing. Then I take a line, this is just a 45 degree angle here. Okay, so if you can see this super well. But again, I'm just using the corner of the plywood for my reference. I measured over five foot, I measured up five foot. I snapped a line. Oh, I'm out of focus there. I snapped a line. And then I took two inch increments. You could use whatever you wanted. This is a bit tedious, but I scribed up two inch lines until it hit my 45 degree angle. So two inches lines, two inch lines everywhere up till it meets the 45 degree angle. And then from that line, let me grab a square. So again, I've got my regular rafter profile with a 45 degree line scribed over it. I brought up vertical lines. So they connect, and then I basically put it somewhere on here, and I start transferring the heights. So I know that the height of my rafter is two foot from there to there. So when I come up here to my hip, it's gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna mark two foot to the top. And I'm gonna take each one of these lines and measure from the bottom to the arch, that number, and then transfer it from there to there, there to there, there to there. So you're just taking the heights, transferring it, but as it's spread out over a 45 degree angle. And what you end up with, there's a whole series of marks on a grid pattern. All the way down. And what will you do from that point? Usually what I do is I just take a thin strip of wood and I just try to bend it until it makes contact with those points. And I can just go scribe sections of it at a time as I bend them. Now, I've drawn the profile of a rafter. 
as well. It's got the same planter cut. It's the same width as my other stock material that I'm using. And once again, it just goes from the point to the point, same as before. Um, I can use this. This should, this rafter should be a hip eight. All the math should be the same for doing a hip eight. It's got the same rise, the same run, just on a 45 degree angle. Um, but if I had any doubts about that, I could use this drawing to basically measure my angles and verify that. And uh, so yeah, I'll cut rafters on this profile and then I will tediously, once again, set the rafter on there and have to transfer all these lines up. Um, this whole process, you know, should have been done on a template that was put in place that I could use to mark out, which is what I'll do now. But just for the sake of drawing it and once you understand the process, you can cut corners however you like. Um, but the whole idea is to project this up and create a rafter profile that has been stretched and spread out. And it's done so by using the diagonal. So it's the same amount of rise, just over a greater run. And that will create your hip rafter profile. All right, so now I've gone through, repeated this process with a rafter, not a rafter, but a piece of plywood that I can use as a template. So now I'll cut this and I'll be able to describe it onto my hip rafter. So often I went with two inches just to be tedious. Wide, usually what we would do is we'd cut a backing angle. So we got one hip in. I had to notch it through my rafter. Not my favorite thing to do, but. I had to do a deduction to shorten this, this uh, hip, and the deduction is as follows. This is the line of your wall. These are your two rafters. So this 45 degree distance, so take the distance of your commons, 45 degree thickness, how much you need to subtract. So this is a top-down view. So 45 degree thickness of the one by, or sorry, like a two by material is two and an eight. So we're gonna just measure that deduction. I'm gonna cut a little bit of an inch so I can get an accurate number. Two and an eighth over. Transfer that. And then that will be my new cut. I'll do that on both sides. And that should be the deduction. That will shorten my hip. Here. All right. Got the beginnings going. Everything worked out pretty well, except for the backing angle issue. I ended up having to take probably an extra three eighths off of this thing to get it to drop down enough. So it did change the pitch slightly, but that's uh, the easiest solution. And I'm not sure what else you could do about it. Um, again, because the line geometry gives you the center, the theoretical center, and that would be, you know, one inch taller or whatever it would be, leave the corner sticking out as this center met at the center point. So I had to shorten it, to drop it. it. Seemed like an easy fix. I was just curious if Peter, you know, if there's a better way to determine that technically. So now I'm going to cut in a couple jack rafters and I would go about this the same way I was building the same way I would as if I were building just a regular eight pitch hip roof so all the math 
your initial cuts, everything should work based on that. Assuming that if you're building a curved hip roof, you already know how to build a regular hip roof. So, um, yeah, then you can just put them in the jig, scribe this template, and everything should work out. Okay.